Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode of the Bulldog 2 challenge. Today, it's all about finding more vulnerabilities in this web application in order to gain a shell. Let's get started. We've been able to circumvent, bypass the register feature, which basically prevented us from creating a user. We've done some front end enumeration and we found a way to bypass the registration. We now have an account named please subscribe. So if we go to the profile page, um, we don't see any new data here. So I'm curious to learn more about th this feature of the profile user profile page in the JavaScript. Remember, this is a uh, angular, it's logic is hosted on the client so we can read the code in the JavaScript file. So I'm going to look for profile. So here we have the path to getting the profile data. Going to look for the pro profile keyword. Okay, so you have failed to authenticate this authenticator user subscribe. If there is no success, store user data, token and user. Okay, so it seems that the session is stored uh, potentially on the client. So if we go to application, uh, local storage, if we go to ctf rootme.org. Oh, we have the ID token, which is a JWT. And we have the user object, which is nothing but the data returned from the backend. So we have the name, the username, the email, but also the authentication level. Hmm, okay. Let's see how this uh, ID token and user are used within the application. So let's look for ID token. Yep, so local storage, set item. Um, let's uh, look for local storage dot get item. And let's look for the user. Okay, so it seems that it's trusting the user. And if it's equal to master admin user, that's an interesting string, return this user equals n, which is the second argument of this function. I suspect that this is a special authentication level. Yeah, it's used to verify if the user is admin or not. So as you can see here, it's testing if that string is equals to the authentication level. Because this is JavaScript and we control the client, let's uh, verify if we could like paste in our value, master admin user, and let's refresh. Oh, seems that we land on the application as an admin. There is no verification on the back end whatsoever. And we have a new tab here called admin. Okay, cool. All right, let's uh, click on it. Admin dashboard, link plus login. Please authenticate with the link plus CLI tool to use the link plus. What is this link plus? Um, let's reuse our username and password, password one, two, three dot, login, wrong password. Okay. What do we have in burp users? Oh, we have the call to the second authentication feature link authenticate. So this link uh, authenticate is the uh, authentication uh, logic for admins, I guess. Now if we send this request, we have wrong password. Okay. Um, do we have any admin user? I'm not sure. We haven't performed the enumeration, but we could certainly take all the usernames, run them through this request and uh, verify or extract which users have the admin level. So let's send this to the intruder. And I'm going to target the username right here. And for the payloads, I'm going to take the file that we've extracted from episode one and paste it right here. All right. Before I start the attack, I'm just going to grab extract 
the uh, data that I'm interested in, which is the role of the user. Select that portion and Burp Suit will automatically define the regular expressions. And let's start the attack. So as you can see, we have a bunch of users and we have a field that says if the user is a uh, standard user or not. It seems that we have only standard users here in the database. So let's uh, move on. When you hit a roadblock, you look for the path, the path of least resistance and you do more enumeration. So if we go back to the repeater and play around with our new request, link authenticate, now, if we send a malformed data, like a single quote for SQL injection or double quote. Oh, we have syntax error. Okay, unexpected string in JSON. Yeah, because uh, I think this is a malformed JSON, so it's uh, it broke trying to parse it. And what do we have here? Oh. We have a uh, information disclosure where exactly this error happens and we can extract the name of the project right here. It's a node project. So the backend is uh, potentially written in node.js and here we have bulldog2, the reckoning. Okay, let's Google that. With any chance we might find the source code on GitHub, yep. I think we found it. This is the name of the author, a vulnerable Node.js web application. Okay, just like we've guessed to teach about application security, a sequel for a previous application made by, be, made by me. So yeah, this is the uh, source code of the application. So let's do some code review right here. Um, generally, the logic of the main is in app.js. So it's using Mongoose, which is a library that interacts with MongoDB database. So this is a NoSQL situation and it's taking database info from the configuration. It's uh, defining the port number, um, initializing the application and then like loading the list of uh, routes. Okay. I'm interested in the authentication. So if I go to routes, users.js we have all the logic right here and here we have the post backend endpoint that handles the link authenticate request so it's taking the username and password from the body of the request strangely enough it's putting the password in the username value that's uh, weird um so what do we have oh we have exec which is trying to run operating system commands using our values right here, the username and password, which is finally just a pass the password field right here taken from the request body. So it seems that this application is vulnerable to remote code execution. Let's verify that. Um, so the vulnerable field is right here. So if I do something like ID, what would I have here? Behind the scenes, I suspect that the ID command has been run. Um, let's use a sleep command for five seconds, maybe. Mm, we don't have any delay. Can we like get a callback? Let's use collaborator. Let's copy this uh, collaborator URL and put it right here, like let's use wget, wget, um, and then HTTP path to our collaborator. Just uh, put please subscribe and send it. Paul, oh, we indeed receive a hit from the uh, server, I guess, yeah, the user agent is wget and the host name is our collaborator and the path is please subscribe. So it seems that indeed we were able to run arbitrary commands on the server using a blind approach. Perfect.
So in the next episode, we're going to build upon our finding and try to gain foothold on the system through a shell. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell to get notified when the next video goes live. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.